Are we recording? Yes. Okay. I don't know what time it is. I don't know what day it is. I do know I don't have any Gatorade. Thank you, Dave. Um, but it is now time for live, well, not so live, with David Rudder and friends. And here is the host. He's a short-tempered, Gatorade-stealing, long-haired bear, David Rudder. That, uh, that was either the dumbest thing I've ever heard or that was the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Shut up, you drank my Gatorade. It was quite good. Okay, okay then. Uh, yeah. Uh, welcome to uh, Not So Live with David Rudder. Uh, I am your host, yeah, well, David Rudder. Uh, you may recognize me if you've ever seen Lincam TV before. Um, if you've ever seen Squadron Antics, I played the police sergeant, hot headed up, uh, well, police sergeant, Sergeant Hawk. Uh, I also, in the television show Filmmakers, I was the foul mouth director, Sonny Falcone. Over here is my uh, partner in crime, Sean Corrett. <laughs> I want my Gatorade. Yeah, that wasn't creepy at all, dude. Oh, well. You really that heartbroken about the Gatorade? I am. If, if you keep complaining about the Gatorade, you know, we're not going to have any time to talk about things and we're going to get canceled. You know what? We've already been canceled. We've been canceled twice, actually. So it's nothing new to me. Oh, we just keep coming back. No, well, this is true. Like herpes. Lepresti knows about that. Oh, he does. Hey, Lepresti. You're not even going to go with it, man, are you? Well, You're considering not even going to make this fun? You know what? You know, I would, but... I forgot the script. You, you, ah. you forgot the script? I forgot the script. We went over this, like, like the last hour. We just kept, you know, time after time. Yeah, well, this is d Rock Productions. It's an easy scene. We can redo it. This isn't a scene, though. This is a monologue well, to an a, opening of a talk show that we're doing right now. This is not so live with David Rudder and Friends. You are friends. Why don't you look at me when we make love? Because you're ugly! Why'd you call me Shay last time? I don't know. I was bored and it was funny. Okay. People are going to think we make love now. Good. I don't want to be associated with you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. A lot of people hate me. I'm actually getting very used to it. I bet you are. Virgin! <coughs> uh, anyways. Uh, a lot of things going on in the news lately. Yeah, they, they are. There are. Yeah, CBS recently announced that they're uh, stopping production on Two and a Half Men indefinitely because of the recent outburst by star Charlie Sheen. Yeah, it's been projected that CBS and Warner Brothers are going to lose a combined $200 million in revenue and syndication rights. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That is. That, that's horrible. And uh, other news, though, on the positive side, uh, ABC, Fox, NBC... Any cable station, and, uh, well, every porn star that Charlie Sheen knows just said thank you. You like two and a half men, don't you? Um, yes, that's correct, I do. Now, if they start back up for season nine in the uh, fall, what do you think is going to happen? You know, it's going to be the same storyline, I think. It's just going to, you know, Charlie's going to drink uncontrollably. He's going to sleep with all sorts of women. Alan might actually finally go gay. There's no hope for Jake, and then there's just Evelyn. I now know why uh, Charlie Sheen is on CBS and we're on public access. We should get better agents. We need agents, period. We do. It's, uh, it's pretty sad. It is. I really enjoy how we've complained about our lives for most of this and we've made one joke. Mm -hmm. Who writes this stuff? Uh, probably an idiot. It sucks. It does. On the joke number two. So, uh, Teen Mom star Amber... Uh, Portland. What is it? Portwood? Port? I don't know. Something. Am I don't know. We'll call it Amber. Teen Mom Amber. She, uh, she recently admitted that the photos circulating around the internet are, in fact, nude images of her that she took with her camera cell phone. Yeah. Every website holding them has recently announced that they are tearing them down off their website for fear of catching a beating from her. Do you get, uh, you get a pen and a paper? No. Why? Uh, I, I want to write... What was her name? I want to I wanna write her name down so I can, you know, go home tonight and... Uh not be with a woman. Yeah. 
maybe maybe you'll find a love from, on the show. Uh huh. <laughs> I made the funny. These jokes suck. We'll write better jokes. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Ooh, money. Actually, that's Roberto's money. I took it from his wallet. Uh, let's see other jokes. Let's see. Hello, my name is John. No, that's not me. Uh, so how about them riots going on? Yeah, a lot of riots in the Middle East. You got riots going on in Egypt, obviously, where their uh, president was ousted. You got uh, riots going on in Libya, Iraq, and even Wisconsin in America. Yeah. Next up, the Middle East. I don't like that one. I don't like that one. I wasn't feeling that. Hey, let, me, let me see. Let me see. Let me, let me see. See? No, let me uh, let's see. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let, let me, let me, let me. So, uh, so gas prices have been reaching four dollars in some states. Yeah. Uh, to try and get back on the consumer's good side, BP has recently announced a new catchphrase. We here at BP will always accept Visa, Mastercard, Discover Card, and your firstborn son. We will, however, never accept responsibility. Can I see P the paper now? P.S. We're sorry for uh, that oil spill that happened. Let me see the paper. Why? See? Would you just, would you just hand it to me for a minute? I don't want to hand it to you. Okay, don't read the lot. Don't read this. That's for Riley for a commercial. We need to fill the commercial break. Okay. Hmm. Can you read? Speaking about commercial breaks, we're already eight minutes in. So, uh, yeah. That, that's, uh, yeah. What's wrong? You look a little confused. Yeah. Who is that? That's me. Who do you Who's think? Who's me? I'm a great Aunt Susan come back from the dead. Sean doesn't have a great Aunt Susan. Why would you say that? I baked you cookies twice. Maybe I did have a great Aunt Susan. Are uh, you kidding me? Yes, you did. I'm right here. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it is. Why don't you go to visit anymore? Because you're dead. What? Are you f kidding me? Hey, 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 watch your f mouth. Ah. It's Riley in the back room. Yeah, you dumbass. Shut up. You date a black girl. What does it have to do with being a girl? I, I don't know. At least he dates a girl. You don't want to talk. I'm okay with that. Your last girlfriend made you cry. At least my last girlfriend was, uh, wasn't 750 pounds and had a mustache. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Shut, up. Was Shut up. Shut up! So, uh, yeah, we'll check. Okay, we're going to go to a commercial, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to have the first guest. Um, That's if we have not already been canceled. Uh, I just want to say something before we go to a commercial break. Your lemonade tasted awesome. Okay, cut to black. kid who walked down the hallways and rode the elevator and had no social contact, I'm going to talk to you about something I feel that is very important. Being single, being 20, and unemployed. And most people of you think that that's a bad thing. I think you're communists. Now, what can I do being unemployed? I can sleep when I'm sick. I can sleep when I'm feeling good. I can sleep whenever I want. When my two friends are at work or school, I can sleep. Sleep, sleep all day. And, uh, God bless America. Hey, we're back. And, uh, we got our first guest. He's, he's probably going to be our only guest. Probably our last guest in the history of the talk show, too. Quite frankly, I think we already got canceled. They just haven't told us yet. Anyways, he's, a, uh, he's one of the biggest wrestling promoters in Rhode Island. He also has his own radio uh, show on the internet, which gets over 50,000 viewers a month. 
He is a very good friend of mine. He is Chris Crimson. Hello. Hello. Good to be on the show. Thanks for having me down. Yeah, well, thanks for coming down. I mean, we, we, in all honesty, we asked a few other people and they laughed at us. You, you were the only one who said uh, maybe. I'm glad I could help out. Are you trying to tell me you have a uh, streak like uh, Chevy Chase? No, I'm just trying to say that I have a lot of enemies and no friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, how you feeling? How um, you feeling? Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. It's good to be here. Yeah. Good to be here down. down You're here saying here. that because the camera's on you. No. Seriously. Sean, you look a little, um, a little nervous, man. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? You got fine anything you want to say? I mean, you two got a history. I mean, you, you guys um, might not be as close as me and him are, but you two, you two are friends. Then let Let's just say it's not that kind of history. It might be that kind of show, but it's not that kind of history. Come on. Really? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, my man was so... He, he told you he was Batman. I mean, in a movie. I mean, it's official. I did. Come on, Sean. <laughs> talk about it. Talk about it. He really did. He got in my face and said he was Batman. I did. I did. We, 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 were, fil we were filming a movie. Uh, Consequences of Our Choices. Now a documentary. Check it out. Um, so, he was slated to play the part of my boss. And um, I was the employee that really... Just doesn't care. Do whatever I want, sleep whenever I want. Pretty much the way I am now. Lazy, obnoxious person. Thank you. Uh, so what happened is he's sitting there. He's yelling at me because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I walked right up to his face. I sat there. I folded my arms. And I looked him right in the face. I was just like, I'm Batman. Yes. Then I proceeded to leave and as i was about to go out the door i turned around and i said hey boss man on top of also being batman i'm also a badass and i booted the door open and i walked out one of the better scenes in the movie it, it, was, it that, was that that was like the only good scene in the movie well no i think the wolf sounding scene was the pretty wolf, good uh, I, I like how we're talking about something that no one else watching this has any idea what it is but we're just talking about it very casually yes. does anybody ever know what we're talking about do we even know what we're talking about half the time? Do we want to? A third of the time we do. Yeah, well, a third of the time. That's, that's a that good point. That doesn't Well. I like how we've wasted like two minutes so far. Just, uh, I mean, we were talking about this stuff just a few minutes ago, too. Yes. I mean, the only thing that's different is we got, you know, cameras in front of us. And quite frankly, cameramen, they just keep talking to one another. I love public access. Uh, you know, they, a little crazy. Yeah. Public access is great. Yeah. I mean, what other people might not know is uh, me and the uh, guy behind the cameras were the ones who actually filmed your wedding. Yes, yeah. that's right. That, that was a really fun time. Did, did a really good job, really great job. Yeah. You know, it, really, it really was a fun time for everybody. Yeah, and uh, anyone who's watching this might recognize you from uh, Joe Masters' wrestling program. Please, I hope not. <laughs> Come I on, talk about that a little not. bit. Y yes, uh, for those of you who are watching this show, who are fortunate enough to watch the show, you recognize me from a show that's not so fortunate to be watched, Grand Pro Wrestling. Sorry, Joe. Yes, I was a co-host of that show for a few years, actually. Yeah. Quite, that's how far back Mr. Rudder and myself go. We go back. Yeah, because that, that's, how, that's how we met. Yeah. Hey, exactly. You were the general manager. Yeah, yeah you, you were the, the co-general yeah, manager. Yeah, the co-general manager. Yeah, that lasted about a week until we got bored and didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's about it. Now things have changed drastically for GPW, but doesn't really concern me much because I'm retired from there. But as you had mentioned earlier, I am a promoter down in uh, Rhode Island of one of the biggest wrestling companies down there, Anarchy Pro Wrestling. Uh, we'll just made, what are you doing, cameraman? You're distracting me. Cut it. Stop it. What he said. No, I seriously continue. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Yes, I, we've just made it over a year, uh, the year mark, mm -hmm. which is a long time running, and we're still going strong, moving forward, moving ahead. Now, you, you have another wrestling organization that you go to as well, right? Yes, I work for another one, which I won't mention their names here, because they really don't want the publicity. Fair enough. Yeah. That. Well, I mean, this really is no publicity. I mean, the only people who are watching this will probably be Sean. No, you never know. You're going to get quite a... Quite a number of viewers. Two don't count. Three. 
That's a good point. We got Riley's grandma. Well, that's only because Fazio has no choice. We're going to make him watch it. That's a good point. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, Fazio, you're watching. Hey, Fazio. Okay, he's just he's hanging his, his head in shame. I would, too. I would, too. Would you really? That's a good possibility. I don't know. Quite frankly, I don't even know what we're talking about right now. I'm we're just, just drifting in and out. I'm just rambling about nothing to do here. I, I'm just kind of killing a Saturday so until you, I decide well, to go home. So what do you do? You're a promoter. Do you also wrestle in the events, or um, do you stay... Do you I stay mainly behind activity? the scenes. You stay behind the scenes? I stay right? mainly behind the scenes and try to keep everything and everybody organized. When, I, when I'm running my shows, when I work with the other people, I'm usually out in front running around the ring like a chicken without his head put on straight. How long have you been in the wrestling business? Uh, altogether about 13, 14 years altogether. That's a long time. Now, have you ever wrestled yourself? Um, briefly. And that went very badly. <laughs> <laughs> briefly, and it went very badly. Now, if you had the choice, would, would you wrestle, or do you prefer working, um, promoting, and managing? I prefer the promoting and the managing myself. How come? Honestly, it's a little safer. <laughs> no yeah. chairs being thrown at you or anything? Uh, no, I get the chairs, I get the cookie sheets and everything else. Yes, I said sheets. <laughs> now, um, at me. <laughs> now, you said you've been doing this for 13, 14 years? Yes. What's your, um, what's your best memory of the business? My best memory of the business? Hmm. The day I dumped Wolfman Branson. <laughs> Why? Elaborate a little bit. He's a schmuck. He, he, he I, in my opinion, he really couldn't wrestle. No? Yeah. Now, you say that you've worked, uh, that you do work for those two organizations, and we know that you've um, obviously done work for Rod Joe, but how many other organizations have you been affiliated with over the years? Any uh, notables? Uh, well, what was uh, United States Wrestling Federation, USWF, out of Malden. I was there for a while, but... Things didn't pan out too well there, so I left. Now, how, how did you start in this whole business? Like, what made what made you want to get into this field? I'm glad you asked. It's ever since I was a little tiny crimson, you know, sitting. Uh, are you quite done? Okay. That's a no. I take it. It's <laughs> no. Everybody right. is quite done. Listen, guys, we've hit the eight-minute box, so time to throw to a commercial break. Sounds good to me. We just Whatever, we'll be back. Card. Just just go to block. I don't even care anymore. Bye bye. Wow, that eight minutes flew by. It, it did. certainly did. We were just finally getting to the good part. I know. Cut us. Hi, welcome to my segment. I don't know the name of it. Let's begin. So the Oscars are over, which means that it's time to look in retrospect at what should have been the tagline for each film nominated for Best Picture. 127 hours. A film that promotes self-mutilation. Black Swan. I can't say anything bad about it. We watched Natalie Portman masturbate. The Fighter. Mark Wahlberg gets the s*** out of him. Then he kicks the s*** out of other people. Inception. A two-hour daydream on acid. The Kids Are All Right. An upscale, long-form episode of Jerry Springer. The King's Speech. Unlike the King in this movie... Obama doesn't need a speech therapist, just a teleprompter. The Social Network. This film showed us that if you can be a jerk, you can make billions. Toy Story 3. The one movie that actually deserves every award it's nominated for. True Grit. Don't mess with Jeff Bridges. He's a drunk with a gun. Winter's Bone. A film that you will never see but will always hear about. So, that's all of them. I'm done. That's it. Goodbye. All right, we're back. I, I really it. don't know why. I think we should have stopped beforehand, but we're still with Chris Crimson. Uh, we were talking about uh, his history in the wrestling organization. Let's... um. Sean asked you a very good question before we went to break. Mm -hmm. Sean, you want to ask it again? Well, the question was, you know, he says he's been in business about 13, 14 years. My question to him was, you know, what made him want to, what made him want to get into this field? Well, what made me want to get into the field was, uh, ever since I was a young, little crimson, I've always, you know, sat in front of the TV and watched 
professional wrestling, and I thought to myself over this, geez, this would be great if I could do stuff like this because I have my role models, you know, like great managers like the late Freddie Blassie, uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Captain Lou Albano, and some of the uh, great wrestlers that are some with us, some not, like the late Mr. Perfect, Ravishing Rick Rude, uh, Triple H, who's still in the business today. Yep. Um, seemed like a very interesting way to uh, get noticed. You know, attra I've always been the attention seeker. Yeah. Without actually trying to be the attention seeker. I can understand that. You know what that's like. Oh, oh yeah, I definitely know what that's like. You know what that's like, right, Sean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, um, WrestleMania is in a few weeks. Yep. That's the... Uh, if anyone doesn't know, that's a huge wrestling uh, event put on by uh, Vince McMahon and the World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, what do they call it? The Super Bowl of Sports Entertainment? The granddaddy of them all. The granddaddy of them all. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Who do you think um, the, the, the big match, Triple H versus The Undertaker, how do you think that's going to go down? Who do you think uh, who's going to win? Triple H versus The Undertaker. Well, if all goes the way... WWE wanted to go. I think we were looking at 19 and 0 for uh, the Undertaker. Although I do have my suspicions to who's going to put out the Undertaker at his 20th WrestleMania. Who's that? I think if all goes according to plan, unlike the way I think it's going to go, I think you're going to see TNA champion Sting make his appearance at WrestleMania, and I think he's going to defeat and put out the Undertaker. If Sting shows up at uh, WrestleMania. I could very well see that hitting at least a million and a half buys. Oh, exactly. Sting would be the biggest draw, bigger than The Undertaker, in my opinion. Oh, definitely. At, at, at WrestleMania. For a man who's never wrestled for Vince, and Vince is, from what I understand, is offered to put him in the WWE Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. For a man that's never been in a WWE ring, but going in a WWE Hall of Fame, if he was to, that would be a, that would be a hell of a draw. Now, what do you think about The Rock returning to uh, guest host WrestleMania? The Rock should have stayed buried under a rock. <laughs> I, I think. I, I think it was a mistake for him to come back. Really? In my opinion, he's not much of a wrestler. He's not much of an actor. But you, you can't deny his ability to get over on the crowd, though. I've he never seen be... anybody who's better on a microphone. Well, remember, remember Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam was good, but he wasn't as over with the crowd as The Rock. No, he couldn't. Well, what about Stone Cold? Stone, yeah, Stone Cold. Stone Cold is a very close second, in my opinion. And then right after Stone Cold, you got Chris Jericho. I I always love watching Chris Jericho. Jericho's I, a very entertaining. I actually think his last run with the company was better than all of his years previously. Absolutely. I, I think he's a thousand times better as a heel than he is a uh, a face. There's a I don't know if you guys had a chance to see it. There's a video up on YouTube. Um with Chris Jericho mm -hmm. and I guess somebody in the audience decided to throw a light stick I actually I saw that Did for you the see first that? time hit him in the time. face and I sent that to Wiley on, uh, on uh, Facebook oh that's right yeah, yeah it was you or you guys I got it from I, I, love that. I haven't seen that it that was what awesome <laughs> what, I haven't seen it what happened? well Jericho had come out to the ring and I guess the people were starting to chant Cena Cena yep. but then they stopped to listen to what Jericho had to say, and Jericho goes, well, if you want a chance, Cena, go ahead, Cena, Cena, and he started the whole champ back up. And he started ripping apart England, because that, that's where they were, and it's got to go, and uh, yep. pretty much England is only known for two things. You talk funny, and you have bad dental uh, issues. And uh, he walks around the ring for a second, and all of a sudden, a glow stick a comes glow stick flying. A glow stick flies from the audience, smashes him, him in the, the face. face. And he goes, I'd like to know who the hell threw that at me. Come on, why don't you stand up and show me who you are? And all of a sudden, you see a bunch of light sticks coming from There's the like audience. There's 30 light sticks that are thrown into the ring. It's actually really funny. You see the referee just picking them up and just throwing them back into the crowd. They start throwing more. And the referee's there. talking to the ring announcer. Just yeah, laughing about yeah, it. It was pretty exactly. funny. It was pretty funny. Um, uh, I think that was a house show. I don't think that... Um, that, that never taper. made it on air. I don't think that ever made it on air. Yeah, I don't ever remember hearing about anything like that because I think that was like two years ago, actually. Yeah, but was I, it uh, that long? I, I think it might have been. It was great. If you get it, if you had a chance, check uh. out Jericho White Sticks. It's funny. Now, um, let, let's talk about your um, internet radio show. That's right, BlogTalkRadio.com. You're very, um, you're very big into doing radio. I remember you had a um, show down in uh, Somerville, in Quincy. Quincy, that's it. Yep, the Crimson and Company Radio Show which unfortunately got canceled due to certain financial obligations and what have you. Now, um, talk, talk about this new radio show that you're doing. Uh, the new radio show, blogtalkradio.com. I'm pulling in 
quite a good number of uh, listeners. We've had to take a little time off because of obviously because of school vacations yeah. and stuff like that and other priorities. But damn yeah. kids for ruining stuff. I know, right? School's overrated. It really is. Look at me. I missed all of high school, and I'm here doing my own show. Look at me. I either got kicked out of college, dropped out, or failed out. One of the three. You know what's unfortunate? The product of the school system now? That thing behind the camera. Going, yeah, look at me. Look at me. I want the attention. I think the camera is Yeah, like, same to you. Yeah, we're number one up here. But yeah, exactly. You know, but... Now, who, what, do you, um, what are the topics usually on your radio show? Well, we, usually it's open forum, mm -hmm. but we try to keep it wrestling related because that's the only thing I actually know. <laughs> now, I, I, don't know, I don't know too much about uh, internet radio. Do, do you take calls to viewers? We can take calls. Uh, we do interviews. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, you know, no restrictions unlike television. You can pretty much do and say pretty much whatever you want. Yeah, no FCC, FCC issues. Yeah. Now, I, I know that you know a lot of guys in the business, some of the really well-known guys. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever have any of them on your show? I'm trying to get... Who are you trying to get? I'm trying to get, get the celebrity. I'm trying to get, get you know, get Chris Jericho's in there. I'm trying yeah. to actually get The Rock. I'm trying to get the Triple H's and mm -hmm. those guys that come on and talk. And oh, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. That'd, that'd be uh, actually really cool. That would be cool. Now, what else are you doing? Uh, obviously, you know, you, you do the film work with me, the voiceover work, the acting. Yep. Uh, have you expanded? Have you been doing anything else with any, any other um, I'm actually breaking companies? onto the music business, actually. Are you now? Yes, Talk, I'm well, going to be, um, gonna be uh, uh, running, up and running my own DJ company. Very nice. I can't wait. How long have you been into um, doing that type of thing? Well, that I've been in about a couple of years, you know, off and on. A little bit finagling here and there, but I'm looking forward to... Uh, Getting, getting myself up and running with no, that. You need some clients, right? I need clients. Uh, yo, Riley, tell someone to put a camera on my man. Let him plug himself. Hey, there That's we go. Warm. All right, thank you. Uh, great, now I just lost my train. <laughs> <laughs> the DJ, the DJ. Yeah, the DJ. Yeah, the DJ. Uh, you can uh, hit me up at DJ, DJ Grimson Sky at AOL.com. If uh, you're looking for a DJ to um, host your parties, I'm available. Rates are, re rates are relatively reasonable. What type of music? All kinds of music from today on back to the 50s and 60s. and Play all kinds, country, western, rock and roll, whatever your heart desires. And if he doesn't quit doing this business, I'm going <laughs> to come up there and pop him one. Are you, you done back there? Man. Okay. All right, guys. We are at the end of it. Wrap it all up. Well, <laughs> it was uh, it was good having Sorry. you on our first I show. I enjoying Thank that. <laughs> I hate that voice. Thank you. You are most welcome. <laughs> more to old Riley. So, more to old Riley. Me. <laughs> There's some Guinness to you. I'm never gonna be able to finish it. Uh, you know, I don't even care. I don't even care anymore. Just go to block. This is our first show. This is our last show. Bye bye. Bye bye. What?